Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Stan and in this video, as promised, we're gonna be talking about my experience with the Canon EOS R5C and USB Type-C power delivery and potential batteries that you can use to extend the life of this camera. So let's get into it. A couple weeks back, I made a video about my unboxing and my initial impressions of the R5C and how everything was almost perfect except for the battery life of the built-in LPE6NH battery. At 4K60, regardless of the codec, you're getting her anywhere from 30 to 35 minutes on internal recording. So there is a, you know, potentially a battery issue if you're gonna be recording at high frame rates or you need to record for a very long time. So one of the options or solutions is to use a USB Type-C power delivery. You can plug in one of your MacBook chargers, you know, those USB Type-C chargers. Anything over 30 watts is enough to drive the camera and you, know, you can shoot basically indefinitely with that wired. Now, I do realize you might not have access to a USB Type-C charger or a wall outlet, so that's where USB uh, Type-C power, power banks or power batteries come in. And currently, as of filming, there's only two real V-mount batteries that support USB Type-C power delivery. Uh, and by the way, these are not sponsored. I actually picked up both of these on Amazon myself. Uh, in my left hand here, I've got the ZG Cine ZG V99, a 99 watt hour battery. On my right hand here, this is the FX Lion Nano 2. Uh, this is a 98 watt hour battery. They're both V mount and they both support USB type C power delivery. So let's first talk about the ZG Cine. The ZG Cine is a relatively new entry on the market. Uh, and this is, I think both of these batteries are actually coming out of China here, but between the two, this is the slightly bigger battery. And you can see it's ever so slightly taller and ever so slightly thicker, uh, not by much though. Weight wise, they're very, very similar. And that's primarily because, you know, they're lithium ion and they're both right around the 100 watt hour mark. You can't really change physics, you can't really change chemistry, so it's gonna be more or less the same amount of weight. The literature of this battery suggests that it's good for uh, 18 watts of power delivery or 24 watts of power delivery. Um, I've also seen some literature saying that this is good for a little bit more than that, but, uh, but basically it works for the R5C. You can connect the USB Type-C output at the very top into the camera and your camera is going to draw the 9 volts and 1.5 or so amps to power the camera and it works for a decently long time. I actually did shoot 4K 60 FPS. I threw in a 500 gig CF Express card and just let it run watching the little OLED display at the very front, which is very nice. You know, this display shows specifically how much battery is left or how much power is left in the battery down to the single percent change. So you can see that going from 100% all the way down to zero. And it took about four and a half hours. Uh, if you actually graph that out, which I did, and I'll throw that on the screen right now, you can see that the power drop off percentage is very linear for the first four hours or so. And then it kind of drops off in the last half an hour. Now, I don't know if it's because it has a defective cell or, or something, something in there is inaccurate, but at least for the first three quarters of the battery, you know, battery life, it was pretty consistent. And then, you know, it dropped off at the very end. Other features about this battery. This battery has a Tdap on the side. You can charge it using the BP charger. Um, and it does have a USB type C in on the other side. So you can charge using the three methods here and you can discharge uh, using the USB type A at the top or USB type C at the top. Now the USB type C outlet and inlet, they're very specific outlet and the inlet. You can't swap or change 
either of them. Um, but you can charge and discharge at the same time, which is nice. There is also a power button. It's a very clicky power button and you have to hold it for two seconds to turn on the battery or turn off the battery. That will activate or deactivate the OLED display on the battery. Now, this button only controls the display and the USB type C components at the very top. If you plug it into the TDAP or the, the V-mount, you know, regular V-mount bracket, uh, these two interfaces at the bottom do work, or the side at the bottom do work. You do have to turn on the OLED display to get that USB Type-C power delivery though. So that's kind of, in a nutshell, the performance of this battery right here. Now, the FX Lion battery, this is the Nano 2. This battery is significantly more expensive than this battery. This is almost twice as expensive, but also it's a better built battery. And you know, we'll talk about that. So this is again, a smaller battery. This specifically is the 98 watt hour version. There's also two other versions. There's a 50 watt hour version. That's the Nano one. And then there's a, uh, about 150 watt hour Nano three. I've only tested the Nano 2, but I would imagine the Nano 1 and 3 work perfectly fine for the R5C as well. Uh, this battery, on the other hand, has a button at the very front with a very nice OLED display uh, in blue and white. Uh, I was actually quite surprised at the quality and the resolution of this display. I wasn't expecting it to look so good, but it actually looks pretty decent. There's also four little blue LEDs at the, on the button that will show you the battery capacity in 25% intervals if you push it. And uh, the display will turn off by itself after a few seconds after you push it. So I don't think there is any way to keep that display on, but uh, unlike the ZG City. So uh, what's special about this battery? Well, you've got three outputs at the very top inputs and outputs actually. So you got a USB type A, a micro USB, and a USB type C. And specifically for the USB type C, this is both an input and an output. On the side of the battery, you do have a D-tap inlet and outlet that you can use. Um, and the one last major difference between this battery and the other one is if you connect a USB type C device into this battery, it will automatically start providing power or start charging depending on if it's input or output, uh, but the battery will automatically react to it. While the ZG Cine here, you have to, again, turn it on before it starts working. So it's kind of a pro and a con uh, depending on what you need here. The last thing I do want to mention about this battery is that this, uh, the Flex FX Lion has a little bit more power delivery than the ZG Cine. So on paper here, battery can do up to, was it 15 volts at three amps or 20 volts at 2.2 amps. So 15 volts, three amps, multiplication, that's 45 watts, input and output. If you decide to use USB Type-C charging, you can put more power into this battery faster and thus charge it faster than this battery here. So uh, just something to consider. But basically these two batteries do work with the R5C. I did get more than five hours out of this battery. In fact, I ran the 512 gigabyte CF Express card completely to capacity and I still had a little bit of charge left in this uh, battery. And the 512 is exactly five hours of record time. So if you are recording a 4K 30 FPS shoot, you can expect probably six or seven hours out of this battery uh, rather than the five because uh, it all depends on the power draw and we have seen that the RFIC here draws about three or four watts less or about 30 percent less power or you get 30 percent more battery life if you use 4k 30 or 4k 24 rather than 4k 60. I'll make sure to link both of these batteries down in the description below if you want to check it out take a look at the specs Take a look at the current pricing of these batteries. Um, I do know that these battery prices fluctuate a little bit, but uh, you can always check the latest prices on Amazon. Hopefully this answers most of your questions. If you do have any additional questions, go ahead and comment down below. I do read every comment and I'll try to answer any questions that you may have. As always, 
My name is Stan and I'll see you guys in the next one.